So hi, everybody. Um, we have 21, including our participants, uh, panelists online. I'm glad that some students have um, have decided to uh, join us, but you know, for these students, uh, even though we don't have as many uh, students here, uh, a lot of people listen to these uh, broadcasts taped. So you'll be surprised at how, um, how large the audience does get. We can we probably go at least to several hundred people who connect. So with with um, your indulgence of the students, even though we have a lot, um, we're going to go through our our itinerary and we're going to make time for questions. And um, uh, because there will be a lot of other people who will tune in. So I want to welcome everybody. Uh, I hope the term is going well, that you're not running into too many challenges on this online environment. My name is Jeff Keshin. I serve as vice president at Grenfell Campus, a job that I absolutely love. I am also a professor of history, and perhaps I'll have the pleasure of teaching some of you who are tuning in, either live or taped, uh, next term. Before going further, I would like, as we always do at Grenfell, uh, to acknowledge that the land on which we gather, that is, in which Grenfell Campus is situated, is traditional Mi'kmaq territory, and as such, acknowledge with very deep respect the diverse histories and cultures, the Beothic, the Mi'kmaq, the Innu, and Inuit of this wonderful province. So over the summer, we held several information sessions on how things would proceed uh, this term. We also placed a great deal of information on our website. It can be accessed, linked through the main page. And a few days ago, I and several other administrators from across Memorial University, perhaps some of you tuned in, uh, joined our president, uh, Dr. Vian Timmons, in a student town hall. Uh, but all of us had to be very brief in that, so we're hoping to give a little bit more opportunity for you to ask questions today about Grenfell Campus. Our goal is twofold. First, to quickly update everybody on the supports that are available at Grenfell, in, in case some of you still feel that you're not uh, fully informed. Because you're all very busy, I understand that. Everybody here understands that. And second, to answer any questions and then to find out and then to address any problems or challenges uh, uh, any of you are having. We got one question in that I'll address at the end. Uh, it has to do with multiple platforms. And today with me online is Ms. Carolyn Parsons, our wonderful registrar, head of uh, student services. Uh, Ms. Nancy Janes, uh, fantastic um, service in our information technology services. Ms. Raina Luther, our Director of Facilities Management and Ancillary Services. Uh, Raina's here because her responsibilities include residences, parking, uh, the bookstore. Uh, Ms. Louise McGillis, who manages our Grenfell Library. I'm going to ask them to provide a very quick update. Also on hand to answer any questions that may come in uh, through chat. But I think that we're a small enough audience here that we can invite people to also unmute. Our Dr. Michelle Piercing or Moore, the Dean of the School of Science and the Environment. Dr. Ken Jacobson, the Dean of School of Arts and Social Sciences, Dr. Todd Hennessy, the Dean of Fine School of Fine Arts, Ms. Peggy Colburn, the Director of the Western Regional School of Nursing, and Dr. Kelly Vauden, our Associate Vice President of Research and Graduate Studies. Uh, following our speakers, please type in any questions uh, and we will uh, direct them to the appropriate uh, person. And if you still have a question after the hour is over, or you don't feel you know, really comfortable asking a question online, no problem, just um, contact myself. Uh, Carolyn, maybe you could just put my email in there and um, we'll um, um, direct them again to the, to the right person. So I'm just gonna cover a very few points in the time that I have, and obviously nearly all academic activities this term are remote or online. Some students are living in res, are living in residence, such as international and some nursing students. But we are compelled to keep our, our maximum number up to 100 out of 600 places to ensure that we comply with provincial health uh, guidelines. A select number of students are being given more regular access to the campus, such as at the graduate level. That means that their masters or now PhD students to conduct time sensitive or location specific research. But those numbers are, uh, of course, very small. We have made uh, some study space, bookable study space available that um, um, Louise McGillis will uh, talk about. Grenville has a committee that is in place, cross campus committee that looks at all our applications, including from our uh, professors to conduct some activities on campus. And we ensure that all such requests follow provincial health uh, protocols. At this point, uh, I will say that we simply do not know to what extent, if any, things will change uh, before the winter 2021 term. This will depend on whether 
And to what degree our province becomes impacted by a second COVID uh, wave? And how things, of course, how well things work in our public school system, where the situation we have to appreciate is kind of different as, for example, they don't have residences, which are very problematic to fill up um, because they can be a source of disease transmission. Though, you are, though we are virtual, you will have access to every one of our campus services. And if that's not the case, you experience problems, please do let us know. If you are unsure about whom, to whom you should write, rest assured that we are uh, smaller and more importantly, tight knit campus. So if you send it to the wrong person, I can guarantee that they'll know to whom you should, that their request should be forwarded. You can also write me, no problem, and I'll get your request uh, before the right person. Now, just a few other things I'll mention, and that might be reiterated or expanded upon by some of our other speakers. Many, but not all of your professors will provide their lectures taped. That is their decision. And for a variety of reasons, including the nature of the class, some of your professors will feel it inappropriate for their class. So it's important that you know this so you can adapt accordingly and stay on top of things to manage, manage things. More than this, given that the remote or online environment situates you outside the traditional classroom, here I'm talking like a prof, and often in more familiar settings, it will be important that you try to practice greater self-discipline. As more than ever, it's easy, and all of you who are students here will know it's easier to become distracted easier to go out and get a bite to eat, easier to turn to your computer or the TV. So it's important that you be self-disciplined in, in that respect. The term, as I always say, no matter if you're in the classroom or if you're online, it goes fast. Nothing's changed, it's 13 weeks. And in a few weeks, we're gonna be pretty well near the midway point. So please do remember that. Um, another thing, do ask questions. All of your professors, all of us need to know if you are having problems. That's why we're here today. That's why we're holding these sessions. We can't help you if we're unaware of how it is we can help. We're all committed, truly, to facilitate your success. The term will undoubtedly bring for some of you, many of you in fact probably, its fair share of stress, its share of fair, fair share of frustrations. Those of us working here really do understand this. For us too, for everybody, it's a new environment and we are also experiencing many of the same things that you do, such as sometimes unreliable or spotty internet connectivity. So try your best to adapt. Sometimes simply take a deep breath. Forward problems to your professors, any complications that you might have, because there's always, no matter the circumstance, reasonable solutions to any situation. And finally, we also realize that the remote environment in which you are learning can be extremely isolating and sometimes very lonely. That is another factor we fully are aware of. If you are in the vicinity, there is the opportunity to drop by uh, and study at Grenfell campus. And you may want to consider things as well, like establishing online study groups, or we at Student Services, or through your student union, can put out a call if you'd like to create online discussion groups of areas of similar interest, such as around books or movies, or politics perhaps, that way you can connect to people and when you come back to the campus, kind of a sense of who they are. So um, I'm gonna wish everybody the very best for the academic term, but before passing it off to our registrar, Carolyn Parsons, and then others to answer questions, um, we did receive one question in advance. I wanna make sure that I address that. That is the fact that some students are experiencing uh, some challenges with respect to their courses using between all the various ones, multiple platforms. We are aware of this. I'll say two things in response to this. One, well, three things. One is we know it's an issue. We do, but um, professors do have for a variety of reasons, the way that they teach their course, they have the right to use different types of platforms. It's part of what we call their academic freedom. I know it can be challenging for you. We have, including in the academic schools, I was at one yesterday, we have made them aware of this issue. Um, that it can be challenging for students, and uh, we hope that we're going to be making some significant progress in this respect. So, uh, if there's anything else with regard to that, I'll be happy to answer questions, but for now, I'm going to turn it over to Carolyn. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, again, I'm Carolyn Parsons. I'm the Registrar and Director of Student Services here at, uh, at Grenfell. It's nice to have some of you here with us this afternoon. I hope this semester is off to a good start, albeit a very different looking semester. A campus may not be open in its normal way. However, um, I just want you all to remember that everyone here at Grenfell really wants to see you succeed, and we are here to help you. So I'm just going to highlight a couple of things, but but of course, if there are questions, there's lots of people here in the audience um, that will be able to address concerns. So as you progress through your courses, uh, I just really want you to take advantage of the academic supports that we have available to you. Um, I recommend that you become very familiar with our learning center, and, and we have Lorna Payne here with us this afternoon. She's the coordinator of our learning center. On the Grenfell website, under Current Students, you will find the Learning Center. Um, all of our regular services are still being offered remotely this semester. So in our Learning Center, we employ full-time instructional assistants in math and writing. You can book one-on-one uh, -on -one appointments with Teresa in math and with Bev or uh, Angel for writing. And you can book an appointment online, or if in doubt, you can always email student services at grenfell.mun.ca, and maybe somebody could pop that into the, uh, the chat. I really recommend you look at your course outlines now and, and plan ahead and book appointments in advance to help keep you on track. So if you see you have a, a big uh, assignment, maybe for English due later in the semester, so think ahead when you might have a draft and, and when it might be helpful to get some help through our writing assistant. The Learning Center also offers supplemental instruction. Supplemental instruction, or SI sessions, are student-led group study sessions offered in some of our selected high-risk courses. They're led by trained undergraduate students who have successfully completed the course before. In addition, there are also peer tutors available in select courses. So please check out the Learning Center webpage, find out more about these services, and really take advantage of that. In addition, our ESL coordinator is offering a new support this semester, Be Virtually Successful, for any of you who may use English as a second or additional language and may want additional assistance navigating this new learning environment. So please email esl at grenfell.mun.ca. And even if English isn't your second or additional language, um, I suspect you, could, you would probably benefit from this service uh, this semester. So although we're not physically together on campus, we want you to engage in campus life and make connections with faculty, staff, other students. Uh, you will see information come out uh, throughout the semester about virtual activities and, and ways to get involved. And I, and I really encourage you to participate. Um, earlier today, we had our Get Involved Grenfell Fair. So hopefully some of you were able to, uh, to attend that. I do want to, uh, before I conclude, I just want to draw your attention to uh, an important date that is coming up, uh, September 23rd. So that's two weeks into classes is the last day to add courses to, to register for a new course. So if you do need to change your registration or register for a different course, um, that is the last day that will be possible. And before doing that, I do strongly encourage you to speak directly with, uh, with the professor so you fully understand what work you've missed. And also, uh, it's, it's good to talk to an advisor as well. September 23rd is also the last day to drop courses and receive a 100% uh, refund of your tuition. As I just mentioned, if you are making changes to your registration, I really encourage you to reach out to an academic advisor to discuss. Uh, if you're declared in a specific degree program, you can always chat with your program chair. Or if you're a first year student or undeclared student, or you aren't sure who to ask, uh, you can call or email the registrar's office. Um, we are reachable at 637-6298 or by email at info at grenfell.mun.ca. So, uh, with respect to that date, September 23rd, also, if you need to opt out of health insurance, that's the date to keep in mind. And anyone doing uh, the science safety courses, if you're registered for lab courses, those, your safety, uh, science safety courses should be concluded by September 25th. I know things can seem overwhelming at times. I just threw a bunch of things uh, at you for, for uh, September 23rd and 25th. Um, but I can't stress enough to you that we are here to help you 
Again, we want to see you succeed. Please reach out if you have any questions or concerns. And next up is uh, Raina Luther. She's our Director of Facilities and Ancillary Services. Carolyn, just before, can we have someone answer the question that we have in chat? Um, uh, could course material not be delivered by a Brightspace shell only, which has most of the required methods of delivery? Did anybody would like to take that on? Either through ITS or one of the deans or Carolyn. Um, I'm not sure if I fully understand, so I don't know if the the student might want to. So, could course material not be delivered via the Brightspace shell only, which has most of the requirements? Oh, so the suggestion is, can just all courses be offered in the Brightspace shell? Is it the suggestion? Just I just want to clarify there. So only use Brightspace. So, so you're wondering if the message can be all courses will be offered through Brightspace. Um, the story. I think one of the deans might want to drop in. I think that was that that is ultimately the the recommendation uh, that courses have a Brightspace shell. Um, however, there are always differences within that. I, I don't know if one of the deans would like to to go a bit further with that. Um, I can add a little bit, Carolyn. Um, so, my name is Michelle Percy Normore. I'm the Dean of the School of Science and the Environment. And as far as I know, most courses are using the Brightspace shell. There may be a few exceptions. Um, what I would suggest is that if you are having trouble um, with whatever platform is being used, either reach out to the instructor, the program chair, or myself. And I can add my email address to the chat now when I, um, when I just close off here. I hope that helps. Who was the next speaker, please? Next up, we have Raina. All right, thank you, Carolyn. And thank you everyone for joining us today. It's great to see people come out to, uh, to learn more about what we offer. So as Carolyn mentioned, I'm the Director of Facilities and Ancillary Services. So with that um, comes the responsibility of the bookstore, student housing, uh, parking, a little bit of, I'll touch on a little bit of those things today because I know there's probably some questions about that. So the first thing I'd like to mention is the access to campus right now. So if for anyone that's been to campus, we do have it considerably restricted on how you actually get on to get into campus. So we're asking everyone to enter and exit the campus through door number one, which is the door in the arts and science atrium in that kind of oval area there next to the uh, residence wing. So we ask people to exit, to enter and exit through that door and to check in at the CEP wicket, which is just inside that door when you arrive. And we've had questions as to why we ask people to do that. And it, it's a great question. And it's really important that you remember to do that. So if anyone's been watching the news and the public health directives, you may have heard people refer to contact tracing. So if by chance we did get news that somebody on campus did test positive for COVID-19, it's very important for us to know who else was on campus on that given day or in a period of time. So by you checking in with campus enforcement, we're just keeping track so that it's for your own safety and for the safety of everyone else on campus. So I hope that helps clarify why the checking in is very important and, uh, and why we're restricting to that one entrance and exit. Another topic that people have been asking about is the parking on campus. So that again is very different this semester as is everything. Um, the parking on campus has a much lower demand right now because we don't have the the typical numbers that we do, so we usually do. So parking permits are free for this term. We're not charging for them, but you do still need a parking permit. We do still need to control um, and, and have some control over who's on campus and, and where people are parking. So um, you can email Paula Da at pada at grenfell.mon.ca and she will issue you a parking permit. Students that are familiar with our previous parking arrangements have been used to going into a lottery. But again, we won't be having that lottery this semester just because the volume of people requiring permits isn't there. So you get in contact with Paula and Paula can arrange to have a parking permit issued for you. And also, if you're looking to come to campus and park 
between the hours of 5 p.m. and midnight, you wouldn't need a parking permit. So if, if someone's not planning to be there in the day and they, they just plan on coming in the evening hours, then you wouldn't need a permit during that time. Also, in during this semester, we're going to have a computer lab open for students to be able to use. And that is Computer Lab AS3003. It's going to be open seven days a week from 8.30 to 5.30. And we do have it restricted to the number of people that are allowed in that computer lab at any given time. And you'll notice when you go there um, that certain computers are marked out of order or out of service uh, so that we can promote physical distancing in that space. So any student that doesn't have access to a computer at home or that needs to come on campus to use that computer are certainly welcome to come use that lab. As Jeff mentioned, we do have limited spacing available in student housing this term, but we are able to offer 100 spaces. So we're using our chalet apartments to house students on campus this term, and we're pairing people up in the apartments, so two people per apartment. And we do have space available. So if anyone's interested or know of anyone that's still looking for a place to stay, you can email grenfellhousing at grenfell.mun.ca and they'll be happy to help you with any questions that you have related to housing or if you're looking for a place to stay this term. I'll also talk about the bookstore. Uh, so the bookstore is open Monday to Friday from 10 to 2. They have limited supply of books uh, on campus, but if you wanted to email or call the bookstore and, and talk about what it is you're looking for, they would certainly be able to help you with that. So the, the bookstore phone number is 637-6264, or you can email bookstore at grenfell.mun.ca and they'll be happy to help. They also have art supplies, a wide selection of art supplies available for sale. Uh, they have Grenfell swag, which we all love, some sweatshirts, water bottles, things that make nice gifts or just to, to be proud of your school when you're out around. Uh, and they also can send letter mail and packages. So if you have something, if you're on campus and you want to send a, a letter or a package by Canada Post, uh, they'd be happy to help you with that. And for anyone that's used to being on campus, you'll know that our campus enforcement is still patrolling campus on a regular basis, working to keep us all safe and answer any questions. So if you happen to be on campus, you're not quite sure where to go or who to ask, um, that campus enforcement wicket in the arts and science atrium is always open. There's always someone there and they're more than happy to help with any question that you may have or, um, yeah, or a comment that you want to pass on. And if you're not on campus and you have a question and you don't know who to call, the general number for campus enforcement is 637-6210. You can always call and ask an officer a question and they'd be happy to help or direct you to the right place. So I hope I've, I hope I've answered a few of your questions today related to some services we have on campus. And I'd like to wish you all a great semester. So I'm going to pass it on now to Louise, our campus librarian, and she's going to tell you about some study space we have available. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome new students and returning students. Um, the library, yes, looks a little different this, this fall than it has in uh, previous years. So I think I want to mention first off um, that, you know, the library is uh, up and running and remote with all our remote services. So if you go to the Grenfell homepage um, under academics and research or under campus services, you'll see a link to the library. And once you click on there, you'll get access to the library homepage and you'll notice a bright yellow bar at the top. And that's where we're sort of putting in sort of the COVID or the new services because we're rolling out different things all the time. Um, so there is a FAQ about our services there, uh, and there's the link to the study space, which I'll talk about in, in a minute. Um, the library has, for a long time, had a lot of information available remotely. So if you're looking for information for your term papers or you just want to do some background research, you can look through the library catalog. You can um, put, books, put books on hold, and then you arrange for a contactless pickup. Uh, and then you just come to the door and they bring your books in, off you go. So you're still able to borrow books from the library, you just can't get in the building. Uh, again, there's vast amounts of online resources available. Um, there are also citation guides. So if you, some, your professor says you need to do an APA or an MLA, we do have uh, cheat sheets to help you do that. 
Uh, you might notice in your bright spate shells, there's um, a widget which would have your reserve reading. So we've been working really closely with the faculty to get as much information in there for your courses as possible. And the other piece you'll see when you load up the library page in the bottom right corner, you'll see a little green uh, chat widget. And that is uh, has quite extensive hours, seven days a week. So if you have a question, you can uh, ask it in the chat service uh, or also go to uh, our information page and we have an email and phone numbers. There are staff working in there during the day so they can answer your questions. So the, the most important thing that's sort of, I know a lot of people want a quiet study space and that's what the library's provided traditionally. Due to all, you know, making sure we're keeping everybody safe, respecting social distancing, uh, making sure we can do contract tracing. We've set it up a little different this year. So on the main level of the arts and science, we've set up some, uh, the traditional library carols. Uh, so uh, when you go to the library page, you can read through, it's quite simple, you can just go in and uh, book book a space. You have to book it before you come. You can't just show up on campus. So you would book a space. Uh, we will send you a notification saying, make sure you're feeling well, do your COVID assessment. You're, if you're good to go, you show up at CP at your appointed time, give them the name, uh, show an ID, either a driver's license or a MUN ID, and then they'll, they'll direct you to the, to the study space. So um, at the moment, if you go into it, you'll see what times were available. And again, we've just launched this service this week. So we are gonna monitor use. Uh, if you have any comments or concerns, certainly reach out to myself or the library generally um, in terms of, you know, we wanna make this uh, as workable and as accessible to as many people as we can. Uh, that is very much the library in a nutshell. Please uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, we do have um, social media, Instagram, Facebook, all those. So if you want to go in and follow us, we do tend to, you know, if we have new services, they'll certainly show up on our website, but they'll also show up on our social media um, list. So feel free to join us there. I uh, wish you all a very good semester. And if the library can do anything to help you, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. Louise, who follows you? Why don't we go to Nancy? Nancy, you okay doing? No, for ITS? Yes, hi everyone, how are you? Um, I'm just gonna start a PowerPoint presentation, so just bear with me for a moment. Everybody can hear me? So I'm Nancy, yeah, hi, an IT consultant with Information Technology Services here at Grenfell Campus. And um, my primary role here is uh, with the ITS Service Desk and Print Services. Um, our department provides enterprise technology solutions and services to support the learning, teaching, research, and administrative goals of Grenfell Campus. Can everybody see the PowerPoint presentation there now? So specifically, our team provides and supports all computing, communications, and multimedia technology services to students, schools, and departments, including Western Regional School of Nursing and Bombay Marine Station. We provide equipment, wired and wireless network and internet connectivity to all offices, labs, public areas, and multimedia classrooms and boardrooms on campus. We also provide lecture capture, media production, emergency notification system, telecommunications, and remote learning technology. We create and manage accounts and support single sign-on access to all Grenfell computing services, such as log on, uh, computer logon, data storage, Xerox on-site and mobile print services, Microsoft Office 365 cloud services consisting of your Grenfell email, OneDrive, Office applications, and Microsoft Teams, and as well as My Grenfell, where you'll find a variety of fundamental campus services and course information. ITS remote support information can be found on the ITS website, and uh, some important links and support documentation there include a, a, a link to My Grenfell, uh, which links to campus services and ITS remote, remote applications, Office 365, 
uh, which will provide you your Grenfell email, Microsoft Office web apps, and the ability to download Microsoft Office for free on up to five devices. There's also a link to my MUN, which is the MUN portal to your memorial services and access to, as well as access to university software downloads through my MUN, um, such as Minitab, SPSS, and ArcGIS. There is a link there for online learning to Brightspace, uh, access to your online courses, and there's some documentation regarding forwarding your at MUN email to your Grenfell email. So the ITS service desk is the first point of contact for any uh, IT questions or issues. We utilize a ticketing system to monitor, track, and prioritize IT issues and projects. And we require uh, a ticket for all support requests. So to, to submit a ticket, you can go to uh, our website at www.grenfell.mon.ca forward slash ITS and click enter a service desk ticket. You can also email ITS at grenfell.mun.ca detailing your request for support, or if you call the service desk at 639-2049 and leave a detailed voice message, that voicemail automatically generates a ticket. So some important, important information to note, um, it is important that students understand that there are two accounts which provide access to the following services. Uh, at this time, the Grenville account provides services to lab, library, and compu uh, public computers on campus. MyGrenville.mun.ca, you would use your Grenville account to log in there. Xerox units for printing and duplicating. Your Grenville email, Office 365, you would log in with your Grenville credentials to access all of the services there. Printer on, mobile print service, and remote access to Grenville applications, including P drive storage. Your MUN account will give you access to your Brightspace, which is your online learning, to my.mun.ca um, memorial portal, to the library website, and for your MUN email. So as technology has now allowed the university to work on improving the alignment of cross-campus services, we are working towards a one account and one email model. So supporting our clients, of course, continues to be our priority and um, as we adjust to a new way of assisting the Grandfield community. And uh, I'd like to wish you all the best with all your studies and encourage you to reach out with any questions. ITS will respond to all questions not answered during the town hall. Thank you. So I'd like to thank all my colleagues here for their time presentations. Um, all of them are clearly very um, eager to hear any uh, questions that you may have. Everybody wants to help in this respect. I will ask um, the um, deans if they would like, or and um, I think Dr. Vaughn is here as well to, uh, from graduate studies and um, Peggy Goldburn from the Western Regional School of Nursing. If they have anything that they would like to add particular to their schools, um, if any of you would like to unmute, that would be great. Uh, no obligation. No. Hi, uh, my name is Michelle Percy Normore again. I'm the Dean of the School of Science and the Environment. And I'd like to say welcome to our new students and also welcome back to our returning students. Um, the I, I, I would like to say something about the labs in the school um, because the labs are fairly unique to, um, to our school. And so the labs are being offered um, Depending on the t on the course, they they may be offered in different ways. Uh, some of the chemistry uh, courses are offering the labs through virtual software, um, or they're sending out small kits. Biology is also sending out small kits, um, and other uh, courses are are simply um, using demonstrations and putting the labs online. But what I would like to say is if you are having problems with um, any of the software or you haven't received the kits on time um, or you need any help with anything with respect to the labs, um, you should reach out to the instructors, to the program chairs, or to myself. And I did put my email in the chat uh, window. So feel free to reach out to me if you, uh, if you are having problems and we can get it sorted out. Anyway, I wish you the best and I hope you enjoy the semester.
Hi everyone, uh, Peggy Colburn here from the School of Nursing. I'm just going to echo some of the same things that Michelle iterated there. Um, if there's any nursing specific questions, I encourage anyone to reach out to their uh, course instructor, the associate director, uh, Jennifer Lambswood, or myself. I'll put my email there in the chat as well in case anyone needs it. Um, our labs and clinical for our returning students, so second through fourth year, are occurring from a mixture of on-site and remote um, and our clinical is going ahead so we are a little bit different where we where we do have students on site and if there's anything specific to nursing i'd be more than welcome to answer your questions so thank you uh, hi everybody i'm todd hennessy i'm the dean of the school of fine arts i also want to say a big welcome to all our new returning students and i hope your semester's off to a great start uh, in terms of fine arts if you were at the um either of the meet and greets yesterday i uh, just want to re repeat a little bit of what was said there which is first and foremost please contact your academic advisor those would have been um, announced yesterday so uh, if you don't know who your advisor is please get in touch with us um <clears throat> excuse me but in the meantime, please uh, reach out to your academic advisor. You know, uh, this is an unusual semester for all of us. We all work in different ways. We all strategize in different ways to to get things done. And, you know, uh, whatever works best for you is great. But if you do have any issues, please let us know. The last thing I want, and I said this yesterday, I'll say it again today. The last thing I want is for folks to feel lost or unsupported or not know how to get through this. So if you have any questions or any concerns, please, 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 please uh, uh, let, let us know. We will, we will help you get through it. Uh, thanks. Have a great semester. Kim, I can't hear you. I don't know. Sure. And I think you're muted. It's, we we do it a lot. It's easy to do. <laughs> no, you're good now. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Problem with my headset. Uh, yeah, I want to just echo what my colleagues have said. Um, my name is Ken Jacobson. I'm the dean of the School of Arts and Social Science, and um, we're all happy that you're here. It's wonderful to have new students, and it's wonderful to have returning students. We don't take you for granted. I really hope your classes are going well. It's probably inevitable that there will be some difficulties that you'll encounter, uh, technical difficulties and some communication. And please make us aware. I'm happy to help you in any way. My email is in the chat and um, I know that our faculty have put in many hours in preparation for this remote term, and they're, they're wonderful people, they're interesting people, and they are dedicated and passionate instructors who will make themselves available to you. So if I can be of any help to you, please contact me by email, and I'm also happy to meet with you through Teams or WebEx or some other platform. Uh, we're small enough here at Grenfell that it, we pride ourselves on being available to our students. I hope you have an excellent fall term. University is an exciting time of life and we want to do everything to make it as rewarding as possible for you. Thanks. Nita, did you want to say anything about graduate studies? Or Pamela? Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, and I, I guess we'll reiterate pretty much what everybody else said. Welcome to Grenfell campus. We uh, certainly hope that you're having a great start to this semester. Uh, unfortunately, the Dean of Grad, uh, the Associate Vice President of, of Research and Grad Studies was not able to join us today. Um, so, but our office is open. Uh, I tell my students that, you know, we're here for uh, 8.30 in the morning, typically, my door is always open, but certainly if, uh, it's a virtual world that we're living in now. So uh, you, I've put our email addresses in the chat room. So if you have any questions that relates to grad studies at Grenfell campus, certainly reach out to me, N. Simmons at grenfell.mun or uh, Dr. Kelly Vodden is kvodden at grenfell.mun.ca. Thanks and good luck and have a great year. Apology and looking around, even though again we're we're in a large group today, but we know that many people will watch this tape. So before uh, asking if there are any questions of us, 
I would just like to um, see if um, I see my colleague Shauna Matthews and Janice Galliott are here as well, who perform very essential services. Anything that you guys would like to say, because um, uh, with respect to advising or health services for our students? Yeah, sure. So my name is Shauna Matthews. I work in the registrar's office with advising. Um, so we work with students um, right from their time of application. Uh, through to graduation, um, ensuring that students know their degree regulations, what courses they have to do, ensuring they're um, taking appropriate uh, course load so that they can be successful. Um, I think uh, everybody here, our goal is for our students to be successful, uh, and sometimes that can mean some adjustments with your course load or your course selection, those types of things. Um, so the biggest um, thing I can tell students is uh, just because we're in a virtual world doesn't mean we're not available. Reach out to us. We're here to help you. We want to support you in any way that we can. Um, so if you want to reach out to advising, you can call the registrar's office. 637-6298 or email info at grenfell.mon.ca uh, and we can arrange for um, either a virtual appointment, telephone appointment. Um, you can email us. We'll um, respond to your emails, those types of things. But don't be afraid to reach out. Um, we really want to help you succeed. Hi, so my name is Janice Galliott. So thanks, Shauna. Um, so welcome to all the new and returning students. And uh, yeah, we're definitely here to help and support you. And I've actually written a couple of email addresses in the chat already, one being the student services one, and then one being the international at grenfell.mon.ca. And I will also add the health services at grenfell.mon.ca as well. So we're here, we're on the other end of those emails. So certainly uh, reach out to us and we'll answer those questions that you may have, not just because you don't see something listed on the website or anything like that. If you have any questions, just reach out to us and we'll try to provide you with the information um, that will help you along in your journey. So we're here to help you. And uh, like I say, services might be offered a little bit differently right now, but we'll still try to get you the help that we need uh, the best way that we can. And lastly, because I think that I saw, I can't see in the picture, but I believe that uh, Lorna Payne is here. Lorna, are you here? I am indeed. To make people aware of, could you, could you be our last speaker, please? Certainly. Um, Carolyn has already identified uh, the Learning Centre and the website where we've placed all of our links in terms of supplemental instruction and peer tutoring. Our first SI session is actually on Sunday evening. So um, uh, if you want access to any of the SI sessions and any of the peer tutoring, which is free service, uh, go to go to Grenfell's website under current students, click on Learning Centre and you'll see weekly bulletin, which indicates when things are going on. All of the links are directly accessible there, but most of the student, most of the instructors also have placed the links on their course uh, Brightspace shells. So you should be able to see it within either your course syllabus or within the announcement sections. So it should be easy enough for you to be able to find the links to peer tutoring and supplemental instruction. Um, My Grenfell is another place that you need to get really comfortable with. So uh, again, under the web page, Grenfell's web page, you'll see e-resources at the top of the screen. And if you click under, um, if you click under My Grenfell, you'll see a number of places where you can go in and you can make appointments. That's where you make the appointments for writing assistance and math assistance through the Learning Center, as well as a number of other areas. So uh, just read the directions. It's very clear in terms of what's available and how to access the service. The last thing I'll mention is ACES. So ACES is our accessibility center. So if you are uh, at, if you're enrolled in course at Grenfell uh, and you have uh, a medical condition or a disability and you are going to need some assistance in form of accommodations related to the course, then you need to get in contact with us. Brad Elliott is in charge of our, our disabilities uh, center. Um, the easiest way to get in touch with him is to contact student services at grenfell.mon.ca and they will make sure that your message gets through. Um, 
there will be a number of things that we can provide, including adaptive technology. So if there's a specialized piece of equipment that you might need, we may have it available and you might be able to access it through us. If not, we can assist you. Um, likewise, if you have concerns about the courses you're doing based on the condition that you have, we can provide you with help and assistance. So um, again, perhaps one of the easiest way to contact Student Services is to go through the email, which is listed in the chat section, studentservices at grenfell.com. Mon.ca, and we'll connect you to whatever it is you need to be connected to. Uh, welcome and reach out at any point. Thank you, Lorna. Do we have any? Um, we don't seem to have any more questions in the chat. Um, does anybody would like to unmute and ask us a question? Okay. Um, I'd like to thank a number of people. I'd like to thank. Uh, Nancy Baker for organizing this and all the people at Marcom. Um, I'd like to thank all my colleagues for being here and providing such pertinent information. Um, you can see by the number of people who are here and the common message about reaching out to us that this is a campus that truly does care about um, all of you. That's that is as as our dean of arts and social sciences said is really our calling card. It always has been, and it's something we're really proud of. And I'd like to thank all of you, both in person and those of you who will look later on tape um, for um, uh, at this session. And again, uh, please do contact any of us if you have any issues. A lot of information, but as I said before, if you get to the wrong person, we'll know who to send it to. We, all, we really will. So I wish you all a good term on behalf of uh, everybody at Grenfell and look, look forward to seeing all of you in person at the earliest opportunity. Have a great rest of the day.